Thank you so much for coming here tonight. And there are so many faces here tonight that have been with us for so many years and so many new faces. So that's so exciting and inspiring as we introduce our new, sorry, I can't see you over there. As we uh, introduce our new name and our new logo. Um, and I have flashcards tonight. You'll have to excuse me because I just don't want to miss telling you some things. So, as many of you know, we began in 1995 as an organization focused on bringing creativity into teaching the subjects of math, science, English, literature, and history. And then we slowly changed over the years and we ended up in Bosnia-Herzegovina where we led a program for youth, uh, uh, focused on youth, youth reconciliation um, for youth that had been ch children during the war on opposite sides of the war, and that program went on for 10 years. Um, and then we came back a few years ago, and so now we're here, and we're stepping much more into becoming a fully-fledged human rights nonprofit organization. So I've been asked the, qu the same question um, over the past few days of people saying, well, when did that change? When did that happen? What was that moment? And so I want to share that moment with you um, because I realized when that moment was. And it was the moment when my students told me there are no children in Iraq. Um, they were second graders. So it was in 2003 and it was at the beginning of the second war in Iraq and we worked in elementary school and middle schools at that time and I had in our second grade program about 30 second graders and I think so many of us as adults we don't really realize what kids are hearing and what kids are seeing and how they're processing it so I went into the classroom that day and I wanted to talk with them about what was happening in the world, what was happening in Iraq. And so I sat them down on the rug. Do you remember, like right now, we're sitting down on the rug before? So I sat them down on the rug and I, I said to them, um, tell me what country are we hearing in the news these days? What do you hear? And they said, oh, 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 oh. And I'm like, okay, what do you hear? And they said, Boston. And I said, okay, well, <laughs> Boston is a city, and it's actually part of the United States of America, but what country have you been hearing about that starts with the letter I? And they all said, Iraq. And then before I even said anything, they went rogue. And it, it, it was amazing. And they, they shouted, they are terrible. They kill people. They want to murder us. We have to kill them first. We can't let them get here. And they were fierce second graders. And uh, so I, I asked them, hmm, I see. And what about the children in Iraq? And they were, they were dumbfounded and they looked at me and they said, there are no children in Iraq. And I said, I, I, I see. Um, well, what makes you think there are no children in Iraq? And they said, because we don't see them. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. That clicked because we don't see them. And then I shared with them that there were children in Iraq and there were children their age. And then they had lots of questions. And the whole energy changed, changed. And they said, well, are they safe? Can they still go to school? They aren't near any of the bombs, are they? Do they play ball? Do they play ball with the bombs? And all of a sudden, I, I, they had a completely different perspective of, of the world and what was happening there in Iraq. And it, it was, they were, they connected to humanity and they were responding from a place of being connected in humanity. And that was such an incredible moment for me as an educator. And so from that moment in, can we see, you know, we don't see them, I realized we have to see them and we have to cross out the them and the other and really connect on our commonalities. And so that really was the start of our human rights curriculum in a much more serious way. Um, and now it's 11 years later and we are a fully fledged um, human rights nonprofit organization. 
And it's a very exciting time because it's a time when states across the country are talking about making human rights education mandated and standardized in schools. We're no longer working with second graders. Our focus is now high school. And it's becoming a, a, a big thing of, of whether or not schools can take this on. And although it's very exciting that in the political arena, they're making these decisions of mandated human rights education curriculum, the issue is there is no standardized human rights education curriculum. And not only that, but new teachers and older teachers who have been in the profession for years, they haven't been trained about human rights and about human rights curriculum. And so there's a huge gap, but there doesn't need to be with us, and we can fill that gap. And with our Telling History Project curriculum, we cover a huge amount of um, human rights studies from genocide to water issues to crimes against humanity, um, many, many of them. And one of the issues, too, in bringing this work to schools is this is not easy stuff to teach, especially as a high school history teacher in your 11th grade, 12th grade classroom. The idea of teaching sex trafficking, that, that could be a bit intimidating. So within our curriculum, we also train the teachers to be able to feel comfortable with these topics and teaching. So that's what we're about. And I'm so happy that you're all with us tonight. This is really great as we move forward. And I want to introduce I want to introduce an amazing person and a dear friend. Where is he? Is he hiding behind a pillar? Oh, he's right here. <laughs> so I want to introduce you to David Rode. Um, many of you may know him as an author, and he is a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner. And I know David because when we began developing the Telling History Project curriculum, we were in Bosnia, and one of David's books called Endgame is about the days leading up to the genocide in Srebrenica, and we used it in our curriculum. And I thank you, David, and he will share something with us tonight. Thank you. 